May profits be upon you. Hey, I'm about to do three videos in a row, right? They're all on Swiss pairs. They're all on Swiss pairs. Uh, I'll start with the CAD Swiss, all right? But I want you to know something. This is not based on the RT money meter. Ah, why do I keep doing that? This is not based on RT money meter, which tracks, <laughs> which tracks the rate of change in each individual currency future, okay? And it tracks it over a 15 week period. I update this every week on the weekends when the, uh, the uh, uh, price doesn't fluctuate and the strength and no, there will be no change to strength or weakness of each individual currency, all right? And if we look at the CAD and the Swiss, but you can see they're about near the amount of the, the rate of change is pretty similar, all right? And they are ranked two and three out of the eight, all right? Uh, but that's not what this is gonna be based on, all right? I'm gonna be looking at the CAD Swiss, the uh, Euro Swiss and the Pound Swiss, okay? Why? What do those, those, those three have in common other than them being Swiss? It's pitting, again, it's pitting a risk off asset against a risk on asset. CAD is commodity based, while Swiss is, is a safe haven. The pound is a risk asset. The euro is a risk asset, all right, I'm putting the risk off asset, the, the, the safe haven against all three of those. Now, why would I do that? I'm gonna tell you why. On Friday, there will be a Euro uh, GDP growth rate uh, coming through. That, that's, that applies to the Euro, all right? They're gonna, uh, gonna take a look at their, uh, the quarterly uh, uh, growth rate and all, right? But I, I meant to put this uh, on the, uh, on the, uh, which one was it? Euro, Euro, Swiss. And I, I think I have it there already. Okay, good. Yeah, what I, want, what I want to point out is that on the calendar, you can see, this is going to be a very important week. Look at this. Look at it. All right. On Thursday, we have GDP growth rate for the US dollar. Big one. Big one. All right. Either we're going to see evidence with, a, with another negative number that the US is officially in a, in a, a recession. All right. That's what we could see. The expectation is that we may just miss it, but uh, there's a lot of uh, financial, uh, kind of, you know, talking heads and <laughs> and uh, experts that are saying that uh, we're not going to miss it. All right, <laughs> we're, we're just going to make it. <laughs> we're just going to make it into a recession with that number. We're not just going to stave it off, but uh, uh, we'll see how that goes, and then. Prior to that, we have FOMC, all right? And I'm expecting, I am expecting between the two, whether we get the big move on Wednesday or the big move on Thursday, I believe uh, the US dollar and safe havens will see uh, strength into those currencies, strength go to those currencies. All right, to safe haven currencies, the Swiss, the US dollar, and the Japanese yen. Okay, uh, it depends on what happens to Wednesday. Up until Wednesday, <laughs> why did I all of a sudden get loud? Up until Wednesday, we may see drifting in the opposite direction to set up the banks and everything for big discount moves coming Wednesday or Thursday. You understand? So, Let's take a look at the Euro Swiss. No, not the Euro Swiss. <laughs> I did say I was gonna start with the pound Swiss. 
And that's what I'm going to do. Now, if we look on the higher time frame, look on the weekly, look where we're coming to. We just broke this strong demand here. All right. There was demand here and price just busted through it. So we've been very bearish, very bearish looking at shorts, right? And here we are coming to this large weekly demand. We're at the extreme of it, actually. All right. In the wick area, what I call the nitty gritty. We're in the nitty gritty of it. All right. But price looks like it's making a beat on here. I got a target set there. You can see it in red. It's 1.14771. Right. I think that's what we're going to hit next week. All right. Uh, but you can see that the weekly is very bearish. All right. And if you look at the daily, you can see all this movement is steadily grinding its way down with lower lows and lower highs. And then we have a big drop. We have a, a kind of a mild, a relatively mild uh, pullback, all right, or retracement. This is about maybe a, from here to here, it's probably 38%, all right? And then we see more downside to this, uh, this previous support, right? Now, look at the the four hour, where we make our money, right? I have this as the low point. Price has already tapped down here with a, a wick to take liquidity, but we know there's a lot of stop losses down here for people who went long and price is heading down here to liquidate all of them, take all those stop losses, okay? So uh, I am very bearish. Once we broke, once we broke here, once you break break here, we're wicking down. We're wicking down. We're not wicking up. You know, we're not you know not wicking up, but moving up from here. Price is got an intent. It has an intent, and it looks like we're going to hit this target at some point. But then, uh, uh, pro likely, I would think next week. All right, especially with the wind on the on the backs of price uh, of the uh, sellers, wind to their backs when uh, the, the GDP uh, numbers come in and the um, uh, uh, with FOMC for the USD, things might start to move down and we'll see these uh, the Swiss gain strength against, uh, against the other currencies. So that's what I'm looking for. All right, so on the four hour, on the four, I got loud again. On the four hour, what might we see? Got a doji here. Price closed bearishly on uh, uh, on Wednesday. Uh, did we get a bearish close on that daily candle? Yeah, very bearishly, right? And do, do you not think after with this momentum that we will probably likely continue down? We may come back and test the this where this previous support was as a resistance as it comes up. We may come up and test that. But what I'm looking for or supply and demand zones, all right? And what are we in right now? We are in demand. We are in demand. I would mark it here, right? Now you say, oh, we, we, we're below it. No, we didn't break the demand yet, all right? We are at the midpoint of this, the extreme of this four hour demand, which is actually a higher time frame. It's probably a daily, right? And uh, uh, once we start closing past the midpoint, it, the, the likelihood of price continuing lower is really high. Look at, look at the way this last four hour candle, you know, the range of it went lower than that. We are on our way to filling this wick, all right? We've already filled in about 60% of it, all right, now, could we see price travel back up? That's what I was talking about as far as the, uh, the news is concerned. We got news coming up. Uh, oh, well, th these, are, these, are, these aren't high impact news for the pound, all right? But we have news, we have that news coming up on Thursday, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. So I'm expecting price to do not much of anything, but maybe we may see some drifting up, all right? And if we do, 
uh, I'm looking for price to possibly, possibly reach up there. Possibly, as a as a as su supply is uh, is ready to get that. I got the wrong color. As supply is ready to uh, catch it, right? But uh, you see how this candle came up and uh, swept the previous candle there. I don't know. I don't know if we fill this this wick and sweep that high. If we do. You know, it'll happen within, within two days, like so. All right, by Wednesday, we may see something like this. Okay. On the other hand, uh, if price continues down, uh, opens on Sunday, and just uh, takes that low, I'm waiting for a break and a close of the candle body below this low below the low, all right? And as price does so, I'm waiting for it to come back to the demand that is left here. I mean, to the supply, I'm sorry, to the supply that is left here for a high probability trade to the downside to hit that target. Remember what I said, I'm waiting for a break and a close of a candle body close below this demand zone, all right? And that would take it out that would uh, remove it. And I would wait for price to come back up to the supply that is here for a high probability trade because this is a demand to supply flip zone. I will wait for a high probability trade. Because that's not, I'm trying to redraw the, the, uh, the, uh, my, the, my, uh, pattern that I look for. <laughs> All right. All right. Push higher. A pullback, a break below the pullback low, and a return to impulse in this impulsive leg of structure. This will be the high probability short at supply. I hope you get it. I know you do. I know you do. All right. I will see you in the next video. Hey, hey, the next video will be on Euro Swiss, Euro Swiss. Smash that like button for me. Show me that you like what I'm doing. Show me that you, that, uh, uh, you want me to continue, <laughs> all right, by smashing the like button, subscribing, and leaving a good comment. Uh, and I don't mean good for me. I mean, ask a question. Let me, let me uh, give you an answer or leave a comment saying, I need help with this, or I don't see that, or I think you're wrong, or I think you're right. I'd love to hear from you. I'll see you in the next video.